from a children's TV presenter has really, really lost his now adult audience. But how did he do it? And more importantly, why? Morning, Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. Nice to see you today. Yes, you, I'm looking at you. Mm. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> We're daft, aren't we? I know. Listen, lovely to have your company. Whatever you're doing today, hope you all keep safe and well. And as ever, thank you for taking the time out to join me. Truly appreciate it. Uh, this particular story, when you think about it, you couldn't make this sort of stuff up, you know, because if you think about the, the channel that we're going to speak about, ITV, they consider themselves incredibly woke, you know. Everything's tick box on that channel. I mean, you know, it used to be fun, full of great entertainment and comedy and all that sort of stuff. Now, everything's a message. Do you not get annoyed, by the way, at the end of the programmes as well, where they say things like, if you're feeling this or if you feel that, just entertain me, you know? Why do I need a message at the end of everything? How did we cope before all of this? Do we have to be told every single thing? Do you understand? Back though to this particular story because it all centres upon the ailing breakfast TV show, Good Morning Britain. And one of the regular hosts of that show is a man called Richard Bacon. Now, Richard Bacon really found fame on the children's TV, well, you know, great show when you think about it, Blue Peter. Do you remember the days of Val Singleton, John Noakes, Peter Purvis, and then, of course, moving forward, the likes of Anthea Turner, making Tracy Island out of some old cornflake boxes. Do you remember that? I used to love it when they did the Christmas decorations and they slightly got on fire. Who, forget, who could also never forget the elephant that they brought in? Do you remember him? Yes, yeah, made a bit of a disgrace of himself on the studio floor. But this particular gentleman found fame on there until he was uh, fired uh, because, of course, there was cocaine involved and it was an absolute disgrace and shame when you think about it. But he managed to rebuild his career of sorts back. And recently, on a regular basis, he's been the standing host, as I say, of the ailing breakfast show, Good Morning Britain, sitting alongside, at times, uh, Susanna Reid, mm -hmm, and, of course, Ramvia Singh. But what's interesting is that that's clearly not interesting enough for him because he recently posted on social media that he popped up at Glastonbury. And why was it full of old white people? Now, here's a picture of Richard. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, Richard is not in the first flush of youth, obviously. Now in his 40s and obviously very white. Uh, what I find incredible about this is who basically you know, advises these people, as I've often said. The bigger problem with that is that the audience that Good Morning Britain rate to, and it's a low audience, but nonetheless, it is that audience, are people of a certain age. Uh, I'm not saying, of course, that that's the only uh, people that tune in, but, you know, when they do their research, it tends to be that particular bracket, you know? Mainly people um, over 65 also, so it's really offensive, isn't it? when you think about it, to say something like that. I mean, you know, your viewers are your viewers. And when you consider it, why on earth would you offend the viewers that you so need, particularly to keep a job, and once, of course, the channel is really reliant on advertising? So as I say, if you look at Richard's picture again, he apparently popped up at uh, Glastonbury and was appalled at the fact that there were just all old white people at Glastonbury. Well, that's not true, actually. There was a real mixed bag of all nationalities enjoying themselves in a party atmosphere under the wonderful watchful eye of the Motown legend Diana Ross, the Pet Shop Boys, Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, so, so many big names. So again, it's either attention seeking or somebody just needs attention. But either way, if I was Good Morning Britain, I'd be very concerned about exactly how many times now I would be booking Richard Bacon back onto that show for the simple fact, of course, that he's literally alienated his own audience. As ever, I'd love to know what you think to that particular story. Was he a fool a second time around after the disgrace of being fired from Blue Peter? Or is it just simply the world we live in? As ever, as I say, I'd love to know your thoughts. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.